Hi friends, welcome back to my training series. I hope you're hanging in there and doing well. I'm talking to you today from Las Vegas. I'm in town visiting for a conference. Uh, and there's a lot of awesome trails around here and I've already been able to visit a couple of them that I'm gonna tell you about in the recap. Um, so let's get into the recap. As usual, Monday was a rest day for me. I think I had the option to walk it out or just uh, to get a little bit of movement in. And aside from the dog walking, I really didn't do very much. Uh, I always enjoy my rest days. On Tuesday, I was assigned 65 to 75 minutes easy. I felt pretty slow and tired during the run, uh, but I ended up running 70 minutes with 5.3 miles and 525 feet of gain. On Wednesday, I was assigned some light fartleks. After a warm up, I did five times 30 seconds hard, followed by 90 seconds easy. And then after a 10 minute recovery run, another set of five times 30 seconds hard and 90 seconds easy. And this run felt pretty good. I felt more energetic than the day before. On Thursday, I was assigned 75 to 90 minutes of easy running. And again, I just felt slow and tired during the run, really draggy. I ran for 83 minutes, getting in 6.4 miles with 686 feet of gain. In the afternoon, I had a call with my coach and we recapped some of the recent endurance runs I've done, the Badger Mountain 50 miler and the Ancient Lakes 50K, and talked to her a little bit about how tired I've been feeling and uh, she assures me that we're not worried about the current fatigue, that it's just that this stress is just a part of the system, it's a part of the plan. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna trust the plan. On Friday, I was assigned to get some movement and walk it out. On Friday morning, I flew to Las Vegas, and then I got my rental car and I drove to Valley of Fire State Park where I hiked for about an hour. The views during the hike were great and the views while driving through the park were also just amazing. This would be a really great place to come back and visit and explore some more. For Saturday's long run, I told my coach that I wanted to run in Red Rock Canyon, another amazing place not very far from Sin City. So I was assigned a two hour run and I ran on the White Mountain Loop Trail, which I've done before with a couple of extras that I found along the way.
<laughs> Unfortunately, I forgot to start my watch when I started, but if I add in the part that I missed, I ran a total of about eight miles with 1,700 feet of gain. And then on Sunday, my assignment was to walk it out before heading to the conference. So I got up early and did an easy little walk in the neighborhood around my Airbnb. Okay, so that's what my training looked like this week. Uh, now I'll answer some questions we got from the comments. Mallory asks, where is the place where I have felt most by myself? I actually remember this quite clearly. During my July 2019 training run on the Pacific Crest Trail, I did uh, a run where I started at noon, uh, ran through the night, slept intentionally on the trail, and then finished at 4 p.m. the next day. It was a really long training run, filtered, lo filtered water along the way, and just uh, basically just really uh, like intentionally had a really long time out by myself. And in that, in that nighttime, after the sun had gone down, uh, I think it was about 9 p.m., I just felt so alone. I, I realized how far out in the middle of nowhere I was. So it's getting dark. I'm gonna have to get my headlamp on soon. It's getting hard to see. Oh, but we are really out here. But certainly during that run, I really felt way out there. I think it's really good to practice that kind of thing, especially in long distance running, because in, in a lot of times in 200s, we're out quite by ourselves. Uh, and so it's just good to know that, you know, we just all we need to do is just keep moving forward to get to the next aid station, not wallow too much in the aloneness. So I think that was one of my most useful training runs. And uh, I really remember that night and how kind of oddly special it was. Simon Gerard asks what packs I'm going to be using at Cocodona. And by the way, Simon has a really great YouTube channel. I encourage you to check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, so my plan is to start with the Epic XT as the initial pack I'm going to do on the first day. Uh, I have the version 1 pack as a 25 liter pack. And I think it's really great for the heaviness of all the additional water I'm going to be carrying. It's really well suited for carrying all of that. So I'm going to be starting with that to carry my 5 liters of water. And then uh, I'm going to be switching to the Zygos for the rest of the race. So once I get to Crown King, I'll be switching to the 14 liter Zygos pack. I'll be running with the Zygos version 4 pack, which has just been my workhorse and I just love it so much. And so that will take me to the finish. I will be able to carry enough water throughout the rest of the race between the two chest bottles and the bladder in the back to make sure that I have plenty of hydration throughout the rest of the race. But I do think it's worth considering having a larger pack for that first section because it's really advantageous to carry a lot of water. And so you want to have a pack that is comfortable for carrying all that extra weight. Okay, Bram asks how I keep eating as he's tried alarms, but after a while he just doesn't want to eat. Bram also has a really great YouTube channel that you should check out. And Bram, I wanted to tell you that I watched the video from your recent 54K and I absolutely loved it. I do wish that uh, YouTube would have automatic translation in its captions because uh, I didn't understand anything that you were saying, although I really love your voice. It was so soothing. Uh, but I really enjoyed the vibes of the event and I really enjoyed your video. So thanks a lot for sharing that. I also put a link to Bram's channel in the description below. In terms of eating, this is kind of something that I have to admit I battle with almost constantly. Um, what I try to do is set an alarm. That 45 minute alarm uh, reminds me to eat because without that, I just don't eat. In fact, at Badger Mountain a couple of weeks ago, I forgot to set an alarm. And while I was running, I kept telling myself, hmm, I'm not eating. I think it's because I didn't set an alarm. And then that was like the end of the thought. I didn't take it to the next level and actually set the alarm to make sure I was getting in the calories. Um, but let's say that it's Cocodona. Let's say that I'm actually eating. Uh, I'm actually setting my alarm. There comes a time where that 45 minute alarm happens and I'm thinking to myself, there's no way I want anything that I have in my pack. None of the stuff that I'm carrying sounds good. Uh, it doesn't taste good. So it's, it becomes a little bit of a battle. I think one of the good things about the 200s though, is that the aid stations have some really highly dense calorie, calorie foods. So I love to get a burger or other a pizza or burrito or some kind of meal, like actually meal uh, quality food at an aid station. So I get a lot of calories at the aid station to help get me through the next segment. And then during the segment, I can battle my demons 
about trying to get food in every 45 minutes. Um, but it's, I think it's a problem that we all face in this sport is that eventually the food just starts to turn against you and it's tough to get it in. Um, but you need to. And as I'm often reminded when I get to aid stations, the volunteers are always telling me how this sport is really just about an, it's an eating contest with some running in between. And so it's important to get the calories in one way or another. And for me, it really helps to get in a bunch of calories at the aid stations to get me through the next segment. The climbing doc asks about training while sick. Well, thankfully, I don't get sick very often, and I hope you're not jinxing it for me. So it hasn't proved too much of an issue, but in the past when I have been sick, I guess I just ease off my training as it feels necessary. And then when I start to feel well enough, I just get back into it. Um, I don't really know anything about the sleep metrics that you ask about. So no, I don't do anything fancy or scientific. Uh, so that's definitely outside of anything I know about. Um, yeah, maybe consult uh, your physician if you have questions about that kind of stuff. I just kind of uh, do what feels right, I guess. And thankfully I'm not sick very often, so um, I don't have to worry about it too much. Okay, thank you everyone for the questions in the comments. If any of you have questions that I can answer in next week's video, please put them in the comments below. Um, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed my beauty shots from around Las Vegas. There's so much more to Las Vegas than the Strip. So get outside, see the trails. This place is actually really amazing. Okay, I think that's it for now. Thank you all for watching and um, I will see you here next week. Take care, bye-bye.